Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back working on the metal planer restoration. And uh, next, on to my next drive shaft that's up underneath the bottom of the frame of the machine. And basically this is what gears down uh, the, the, the spinning motion from the, the flat belt pulleys that drive it, slows it down to drive the big bull gear. And uh, we got a couple of gear reducing gears here. So this is the gear that drives the bull gear. This one uh, is taking power off of another one. And we've also got this whole mechanism down here on the other side, which we'll be going into a little bit more. This basically adjusts uh, how much of a feed over uh, the cutter moves each, each uh, stroke of the machine. So uh, there's some uh, fairly complicated mechanism. I say it's complicated, I haven't been into it yet, uh, but we're gonna get in there and look at it, and make sure everything's good, so. Uh, job for the day is get this taken apart, get things cleaned up, start getting things painted. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have to do any repair work or anything on uh, this whole mechanism until we get in there. Uh, we'll play it as we go. So let's get going. Well, let's start by taking the uh, bearing off here. I was just looking at these. Uh, Make sure they go back on the same same way and, uh, and so forth. So I think I'm going to put a couple of witness marks on here so that I make sure that everything matches up. Let me grab a punch. So I'm just going to put a matching punch there. One mark, one mark. Um, the other side over here, let's see. I'll put two marks on this one. And I'm also going to put a uh, single dimple down here on the ends, just so that I know that the one goes on this side and that'll pretty much, only place the other one can go will be there. So the bearings, they feel pretty good. We'll know better once we get into these, but uh, Go ahead and pull these bearing caps off. Okay. That bearing looks good. With any luck, I don't think we're gonna have to do anything to those. So go ahead and just put these back together like such so I know what goes with what. Go ahead and take this one off, same thing. And that bearing looks like, well, there's a little bit of scoring in this one. That one may have to get re-poured. Uh, we'll, we'll evaluate that later on, but uh, once I get it cleaned up, but that doesn't look all that great. All right, so this bolts up under the bottom of the frame. There's a hand wheel here that is froze up, but that adjusts on this worm gear and that adjusts a dog. This is just a trip dog that basically adjusts how much this thing ratchets each time. And that is directly proportional to the amount of movement in the cutter as it's uh, going the machine. So uh, I don't see any bolts. Taking that on, that's just free spinning on the shaft. So um, let's work on this end, see what we got to do here. Now I got to this big nut on the end and uh, I had to take a little break here and go round up something to take that out. That's two and three quarter inches across. My biggest adjustable wrench fell way short, but um, Made a couple of phone calls. I got a friend that had a 
two and three quarter inch socket. It's one inch drive, but had a uh, reducer to three quarter inch drive. So let's see if we can get this apart. I may have to go put it in a big vise to hold it. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, move this to a new place and we'll try that. I took this over to my vise. It was going to be kind of hard to get the camera set up in there. It was just such a tight fit with the gantry crane that I just broke it loose and then uh, brought it back over here to the table. And there we go. No problem at all. Looks like there's a keyway in here holding that on. Take my lead hammer. got it coming out all right let me uh block this thing up and we'll get a brass drift and drive that on out i've got a brass punch on here now and we'll just continue driving that on out the brass just protects doesn't mushroom that shaft or anything like that the brass is softer than the steel. There it comes. Gonna move this out of the way right now. I believe this whole assembly just comes right off. I've been sitting here looking at this shaft and you can definitely tell where it's worn from running in those bearings and um, where it's just turning in there. It looks like it's between 10 and 15 thousandths undersized, depending on where you're at. Uh, we've got some pretty nasty, and eh, it's not terrible, but it's, it's, it's pretty bad still. Right in here, some uh, scoring on the shaft. And I'm sitting here just trying to decide what I want to do on this shaft. Um, I got a couple of options. Option number one is I just make a new shaft. And honestly, that's where I'm kind of leaning towards. Um, but option number two is I've got a spray welding rig over there where I could build this up, basically turn it down a little bit, spray weld on here, build it back up. I'm going to have to think about that. Um, price some material too. Let's see, it's, this is a inch and an eighth roughly right here that the gears are on and then it turns down to uh, inch and excuse me, two and an eighth, and then this comes down to inch and three quarter, and then this comes down to about an inch and five eighths down here. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking probably just gonna make a new shaft right now. So I need to get my gears off. Uh, we got a couple of uh, keys in here that are wedged in place. I've already measured where they are so I can make sure that I get them back in the same spot when I put it back together. So let me get a hammer and a punch See if I can uh, knock those keys out. It's going to be tough. Oh, that's good. Wasn't in there too bad. So that's just a tapered key. Um, wedges in there. Let's see if we can get lucky on this other side too. There we go. All right, that wasn't, wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. And now, I'll take this over to the arbor press and see if I can press these uh, press these off. Before I do, I'm going to get in there and just clean these shafts up real good and uh, make sure there's nothing on there for it to catch on. I've got the gears removed now off of the shaft. And uh, guys, I took this out to the museum to use the uh, big press out there. This big gear, or the small gear here, was a little bit too large to fit through the gap in my arbor press that I have here in the shop. So I went out and used the hydraulic press out of the museum. And um, I took a little quick video of it while I was out there. The big gear, 
uh, actually both the gears came out very easily. I put the big gear on first and it just took a couple of pumps and the shaft just literally fell out. I flipped it over, put the uh, small gear on there and I didn't even have to press it. I was just able to, uh, really almost the weight of the shaft was enough to pull it out. I had to uh, persuade it just a little bit by hand, but uh, came out without having to press at all. So these are off now. And now that I've got my shaft completely out, I, I pretty much decided, I think I'm just gonna make a new shaft. There's just some, stuff in here I'm just not crazy about. And the biggest thing is right here, there's some pitting in here. I mean, that's that's an eighth inch deep in places. And um, yeah, I could probably spray weld it and be okay, but I'm gonna feel better just replacing the shaft, I think. So I'll get some material ordered and that'll be a job we do on the lathe, probably turning between centers uh, and get that done. So anyway, we're done with this part. Let's get over now and work on the other two pieces that we still need to get completely apart. All right, so this again is just uh, basically what indexes the, the, the feed, the cross feed or whatever. There's some little dog places in here and by adjusting the crank on the piece behind it, you can adjust how far it moves on each stroke. There's a, also some adjustment and there's a little piece that goes across here that depending on where you put it at, it adjusts the whole stroke. So uh, this piece just kind of, I think, pivots back and forth. I want to take it apart though. I'm not sure what's on the inside that there will. Let's just take it apart and see. I think I know, but let's, uh, let's take it apart. Take this is a little oil cup or grease cup rather. Um, it's missing the top. Should have a little thing that you turn and it pushes grease down in there. Let me uh, get that out. So this is just a, just got a little friction clutch disc in here. Feels like it's leather maybe. I'm not sure what that is. We'll figure it out. And it's full of grease. Um, we'll have to get all that cleaned out. Yeah. There's another friction piece behind it. And looks like we got bronze bushings on either side and those are fairly scored up. I'll probably just end up turning new ones, press those out and replace those. So, okay. I'm just gonna, for right now, we'll just kind of put this back together. It's going to take a good cleaning. So this piece here is a worm gear, a uh, worm and a worm gear. And basically what this is, does is adjust this little dog. This is a stop and that little clutch piece that we took apart in a minute has a piece on the back when it comes around that kind of stops it from going past a certain point. And it is really, really, really tight. So, um, Basically, this whole piece is turning inside of a sleeve over here. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, turn it so that the worm is not engaging the gear. And then hopefully I can uh, get all of it taken apart. 
Well. Turn it now. Okay. So now this should just come off. Yeah. I think what we're going to have to do here is uh, there's a pin holding this handle in place. Should just be a tapered pin. See if I can knock that out. This looks like the small side. A little bit bigger drive pin. Okay, that is out. Is there a pin holding this in place or does it just screw off? Is a uh, drive pin in there. Huh. That's uh, unusual. That pin doesn't go all the way through. There's a little keyway cut in there that, that pin fits on. Let me see if I can get some vice grips or something and pull that out. Yeah, came right out, no problem. And now, that comes out. All right, we can get all this stuff cleaned up. Well, there we go, there's the sum of all the parts. Everything is taken completely apart, and uh, next step is to get all of this uh, cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Gonna spend some quality time over there at the parts washer, uh, getting all this grease and gunk off of it. Uh, parts are going to be repainted and we're going to have to make a new shaft and then of course uh, reassemble everything. So that's kind of the game plan going forward on this. I won't bore you guys with the cleaning up and the painting part, uh, but we will bring you in there and let you see us making that new shaft. Uh, I got to get some material ordered. I don't have a, the material on hand to, to make that out of, so I have to get that ordered, uh, but that should be a, shouldn't be too terribly bad of a job. A little bit of lathe work, and then uh, the mill work for a couple of keyways. And we should have that knocked out easy enough and be able to get the next shaft, counter shaft back up underneath the bottom of the, uh, the planer, metal planer. And with that, that'll be a wrap guys. As always, uh, thanks for watching the videos. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The comments are appreciated and uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you see. And we'll catch you on the next video. Going to get this planer knocked out. One more bite out of the elephant. Going to take her one bite at a time. Thanks.